because if I could explain to anybody how lonely pregnancy is, oh, I, I can't put it into words. I'm just so like, you let him hit it raw. You didn't have second thoughts. Now you a single mom. Now you a single mom. I finally got the message, you know. He didn't love me. He didn't. He didn't even like me. But you like the one. Oh yeah. So. I have been so hesitant to post about this um, for two reasons. Number one, I don't like negativity and I don't want to be like the bearer of bad news. Uh, number two, I didn't want to believe it. But after doing so much research and uh, getting a lot of messages, uh, I'm going to just deliver the unvarnished truth to you guys. I'm just going to lay it out straight. We're in a dating crisis. Not basically, we are. That's what's happening. So let me look at my research here because I don't want to mess it up. So men looking for casual dates and our relationships is down 50%, five zero since 2019, not since 1970, since 2019. Right. And that's a short, that's a short time ago, 2019, just a few years ago. Right before the pandemic, down 50%. They're not looking, which means if you're a woman looking, they don't give a so as this trend continues, by 2040, 45% of women, 45% of women between the ages of 20 and 45 will be single and childless. In America, men are increasingly disengaging from the dating scene due to perceived challenges in investing in modern women. Statistics indicate a decline in men seeking casual dates or committed relationships potentially leading to a future where a substantial portion of women remain unmarried and childless by 2045. Moreover, men exhibit reluctance towards contributing to sperm banks. A video circulating online advocates for men to explore relationships abroad and discourages dating modern American women. The underlying message is that overseas relationships may offer a more favorable dynamic for men. This trend reflects a broader societal shift in gender dynamics and expectations. Modern American women are often perceived as demanding or difficult to please, leading men to seek alternatives. Factors such as changing gender roles, economic pressures, and cultural shifts contribute to this phenomenon. If you are single and you are in the dating marketplace at that time, when that happens, say you're 37, 36, 38, 40, whatever it may be, and you are still on the hunt for that man, and you hit the wall and you can see in your face that you are no longer the face that you were at, what, whether it was 30 or 35 or 25, whatever it is, you are going to be panicked. Because now you know that you are going to compete with women who are younger, who are largely more fertile, not always, but largely speaking, yes, who have that youthfulness to them, who have that estrogen, progesterone, whatever the hormonal balance is that makes someone young, it's there and you're losing it. And you become hyper aware of that. And that is why women begin to panic. You know what I want to talk about, you guys? So I live in New York, specifically Brooklyn, and I be outside, you know, enjoying summer as I should. And I've been going to the block parties, all of that good stuff, you know, the day parties has been a time. But the problem is the men just stare at you. They just stare at you the whole time. They don't approach you. They don't want to get to know you. They don't want to, oh, do you want to drink? It's just a staring contest the whole time. I'm trying to figure out how am I supposed to meet my future husband if the men are not approaching? Because I'm not approaching a man. Like, it's giving the men want to be chased now. That's what it's giving, and I don't like it. In today's dating landscape, modern women experience frustration as men become less inclined to initiate contact. As women age, they confront the reality of diminishing youthfulness and fertility, leading to feelings of anxiety. Consequently, women are compelled to take the initiative in approaching men they find appealing. Meanwhile, men express a desire to ensure the authenticity of the women they engage with. This shift in dynamics creates a sense of urgency 
particularly among women age 35 and above, to find a suitable partner and establish a committed relationship. The evolving dynamics underscore the complexities and pressures inherent in modern dating, where traditional gender roles are being renegotiated and individuals navigate the pursuit of companionship in an increasingly diverse and dynamic social landscape. When they ask, what do you bring to the table? Your soul. My soul is the table, the chairs, the rug underneath the table. My soul are the dinner plates. My soul is the dinner. My soul is the dessert. My soul is the breakfast, the lunch, the brunch. My soul is the knives, the forks, the spoons. My soul is everything. The table, the house, all of it. My soul. And that's what's not going to be easily replaceable. Does anybody want to get married? Um, because I need to, to get on this. Like, I need to have kids. I need to get married before my grandparents pass away. And I also need to have kids before my dog passes away because he's a really good kid dog. Um, and I'm running out of time. You guys, it is hard out here. So applications are open. If you want to. It'll be hard. But I'm fun. Sir. You better have more than fun. What else are you bringing to the table? Can you cook, clean, take directions well? What makes you think that I need to take direction from a man? First of all. Second of all. Are these directions to a place I want to go? Like, home goods? <laughs> yes, I love home goods. Um, Gucci? Give me the directions to Gucci. I will take those very well. Very well. Can I cook and can I clean? Yeah, also very well. Can you build a home? Can you build a home? Can you woodwork? Can you hunt? Can you hunt? Can you be a hunter? Let's fucking burn the patriarchy to the ground because this is absolutely absurd, uh, sir. John. John Ways. John Wees. John Weez. How disgusting these modern women are. If men are expected to handle everything, why should women approach? What purpose do you serve in their lives? Life is just not easy for the woman when she hits a certain age. We're talking about women who've kind of had this high life and then they've stopped getting offers because maybe now she's hit like 38, 40. And then it's almost like they've kind of gone into this dark hole now. It's so toxic, so it's like horrible. Well, here's the thing. Most men don't feel sorry for those women and I'll tell you why. The reason men don't feel sorry for them is because the experience that she begins to go through when she's older is the experience 90% of men go through every single day. The guy who works at the post office, the guy who helped you pack your bag, the yeah. guy who delivered your Amazon parcel, the guy in your class, the guy that you worked with, most guys are invisible. It is only the high value guys that catches women's attention. The guy who's mm -hmm. tall, attractive, and shaped successful. So when women who have had that taste of the high life, have been that desirable, gotten all the attention, everything, they then get to a point where now they're being treated how most guys are treated. Guys don't feel sorry for them. A lot of guys feel that if you wanted to have a partner, have a family and settle down, you get to that point in life and you haven't done that, it's because you fucked up because you definitely had an abundance of opportunities to do that so it's very difficult for a lot of guys to have sympathy because for a lot of guys I it's like that, yeah. this is how it's been for us since day one and most of us don't even get to a point where we can attract a girl like you you've been there you've had the chance to get those guys but because you decided to play around maybe you didn't want it serious and that's fine like there's nothing wrong with it but you have to accept what comes with the path that you choose we talk oftentimes about this i don't need a man 
philosophy. I don't need a man. I don't need a man that's been indoctrinated into young women. The reason for that is that in many cases, men have been reduced to a wallet. So women are having these conversations about men and they're saying, well, I have a job. I have financial stability. So I don't need a man for that. And what they're forgetting about is all of the other things that guys bring to the table. They're forgetting about, you know, that shoulder to cry on. They're forgetting about that sense of union when times get tough. They're forgetting about someone, you know, starts breaking into your home and you're, you don't want to handle that situation. You want your protector guy to handle that situation. Let's be honest. They're forgetting about, well, I'm going to want kids and I'm going to want my kid to have a father, a real father. And remember, you know, women and men bring different things to the table. Dads and moms bring different things to the table. So a mom can't be a dad. A dad can't be a mom. It is different. What, what if Summer comes to you as pretty as she is and says, mom, I want to be a city girl? She ain't gonna be no city girl. <laughs> so Summer ain't allowed to be no city girl? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> I want her race totally different. Like, you know, I don't even want her to either see the light of day like that. Like, I really want her to just be like, you know, like level headed a school girl and just on a whole nother way. It's like, you know, I kind of was raised different, so I don't want to raise her up how I was raised. So, you know, I'm a city girl, ain't nothing wrong with it, but I don't want that for my daughter. Two-thirds of all student debt is held by women in the United States. Black women hold the most student death, debt out of any racial or ethnic group in the United States. Childcare is so expensive that it is outpacing women-dominated fields like education and nursing. Women who hold higher degrees, higher education can no longer afford to work because of the cost of childcare. So they're going even more into debt with their significant student loans and then their inability to work. Women are also in poverty more than men. We also don't get any paid parental leave. So women have to decide between bonding with their child or losing their job. You can't convince me that they aren't trying to force us into pregnancy, force us to be uneducated and make sure that we are in the home and reliant on men. Today, I read a quote that said, white women ignore the sexism to benefit from the racism. White women, it's time to get your head out of the sand to protect our future generation. It's time. Due to their selfishness, modern women often overlook the crucial role of fathers in children's lives. They may believe that a mother alone can provide sufficient upbringing and support for a child. However, as time passes, they come to realize the significance of a father's presence. Unfortunately, by the time this realization dawns upon them, it may be too late to rectify the situation, leaving them with nothing but regret. This belated understanding highlights the importance of acknowledging and valuing both parental roles in a child's development. Fathers play a unique and irreplaceable role in fostering emotional stability, providing guidance, and serving as positive role models. Neglecting this aspect can have long-lasting repercussions on the well-being and development of the child. Let's talk about feeling lonely in your marriage. I think that this is something that has been swept under the rug for a very long time and most women don't feel comfortable talking about it. I got divorced three years ago. Before that, I did feel extremely lonely in my marriage and I didn't talk to anyone about it. I felt ashamed and like it was my fault and that I had failed and it was all internally something I was dealing with. I felt like I was supposed to support my partner and never say anything bad about him. So if I talked to my friends about how I was feeling, it was not being a supportive wife. It's so all these things that aren't true. As women, we deserve to be supported and loved and taken care of no matter what stage you're in, no matter how old your kids are. So just know that you deserve that. You deserve to be treated well and loved and supported and that being lonely in your marriage is not okay. Work on it if you want to work on it. Leave if you want to leave. But know that you need to talk to people and that you will get through this one way or another. 
In the modern world, women wield considerable power and autonomy, capable of pursuing their aspirations unhindered. Their loyalty primarily lies with their emotions, believing men to be too immature to comprehend their depth. However, this perspective overlooks women's relentless pursuit of excellence in every aspect of life, save for the early stages of relationships where they must invest deeply in their partners. While men navigate these phases adeptly, women are perceived to falter, often resorting to deceit. Men want attention and will do anything to get it, just like a child. Let's correct that statement, okay? Some people will do anything for attention and do anything to get it. They will be good to get attention and they will be bad to get attention. It's almost like that's part of human behavior. Stop answering to men when they make childish or pandering or accusatory statements. Does one mean like this one? Responding to someone who has interrupted a conversation that they aren't even invited to is like saying it's okay that they're there. Well, that's nice, but I'm definitely interrupting this conversation. Ignore, delete, block, whatever you have to do to not trigger a cortisol or endocrine or any kind of response in your body. It's about you. Now there's a radical change in priorities. Everything is about the individual and their feelings. The less that you acknowledge that it's happening, the more that it becomes background noise and the more that it literally just doesn't even exist anymore. But yet, here's a post about it. But for women to recenter and heal and decenter men and not consider them to be a part of blah 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 to not consider them they aren't invited to this piece of ourselves that is working on ourselves that is working on us being the center yet ironically one is still centering men in this conversation and no amount of good behavior or bad behavior or tantrum throwing or gesturing is going to get precedence over me and my well-being once i'm centered in that space i'm willing and able to listen to anybody just a thought here, but perhaps the best way to get others to listen to what one actually has to say would not be to start out generalizing a group of people just for the sake of grabbing their attention, and then perhaps one's words might actually carry more weight. Let me break it to you boys. The average 23-year-old girl has slept with more men than the average 53-year-old woman. Let that sink in. We're living in a time, and I know this because I'm a, I used to be a teacher for many years, and I couldn't believe the sexual promiscuity amongst 14, 13, 12 year old girls because here's what they had. They had access to Snapchat. They could send nudes of themselves to older boys or whatever it is from the age of 11, 12 nudes or whatever it is, well it's technically child pornography, they would start so young and they're living in an era where there's no uh, negativity attached to sleeping around. It's seen as liberating. So by the time a girl is 23 years old, I promise you she's slept with more men than a 53-year-old woman because a 53-year-old woman grew up in a time where she was shamed for sleeping around, there was no sexual liberation, there was a sanctity attached to sexuality. A 22-year-old grew up in a time where Snapchat, twerking, um, you know, wearing promiscuous clothes, going out, being on social media was all normalized. So if you think that, oh, you know, I'm going to be with a 21-year-old, she's going to have low body count. Guys, what world do you live in? What world do you live in? Modern women perceive older men as capable of providing greater dignity and respect compared to younger men. This perspective often stems from the belief that financial stability equates to dignity and wealth signifies respect. In the eyes of many, a mature man with established financial security is seen as more able to fulfill a woman's desires and needs. Younger men, often struggling with their careers and financial situations, may not be able to meet the materialistic expectations of modern women. Consequently, they might be perceived as lacking the means to offer the desired lifestyle or support. In contrast, an older man who possesses wealth and material assets, such as a luxurious car, may be more appealing to these women. While this preference for older men may seem driven by materialistic desires, it can also be rooted in a desire for stability and security. Older men are often perceived as having more life experience and maturity, qualities that some women find attractive and comforting in a partner. Additionally, the financial stability they offer can provide a sense of security and assurance for the future. It's choking me out. I don't get dating nowadays. This is the largest group of butthurt, bitter pen pals 
I've ever seen in my entire life. It, it, it's absurd. Like you'll establish mutual interest with somebody, exchange numbers, and then you want a good morning me beautiful until my head is ready to explode. Like, I don't know about y'all, but my attention span is not something to play with. You've got two or three weeks of chit chatting with me and FaceTiming before I expect you in person. All right, this isn't fucking summer camp. Let's keep in touch. No, no. I want to feel the weight of a man's burn. I can't say it, it's TikTok, but you guys, you, you get what I'm saying. Like, we need to establish real life chemistry. I'm not gonna keep talking to you, talking about I miss you. I don't know how. We've never met more. If you miss me, why aren't you in front of me? Like, what's the issue here? Why aren't you making a move? Lock it in, buddy. Are you short? Are, are, do you smell? Are you poor? You can't, you can't afford a date? We can go to a fucking park. Like, are you married? What is the issue? Because now you act in sus. And I don't, I, I lose interest on suspect people. Like, what? Lock it in! Twenty twenty four. Can we stop asking men to take care of us and pay our bills immediately as soon as we meet them, as if they're obligated to financially make sure we're secure, fresh out the gate? I will never understand this. I hear the craziest stories from men how they'll go on a first date with a woman or their first conversation with a woman, and immediately she's making it a requirement and a standard to pay their bills and fly them out and take them shopping and drip them in designer and take care of their three kids. It's not even theirs, and this is the standard if you want to get to know me, let alone date me. I that does that's insane to me. Like, I can't understand that or comprehend because I feel like as a woman, you should hold your own and you should make sure your bills are taken care of on your own. I'm all for a man leading and providing and protecting because that's what a man's supposed to do. And a part of providing is, of course, making sure that his woman is financially secure. But the key word there is his women. You can't just meet a man. He doesn't even know you. Y'all don't even know if you're going to be together. And the standard is you got to pay my bills. Like, that's crazy to me. But if a man met you on the first date and the first night and he wanted to have sex with you, you would be appalled and offended. Doesn't make sense. Indeed, the perspective of these wise women highlights an important aspect of relationships. Women should not fault men for matters beyond their control. Instead, they advocate for women who are willing to be partners in every sense sharing both joys and burdens with their significant others. In this view, it's crucial for women to recognize that they play an active role in relationships beyond just expecting financial stability from their partners. Rather than solely focusing on materialistic desires, they should understand the importance of mutual support and contribution. A healthy relationship is built on shared responsibilities and mutual understanding. It's not about burdening one partner with all the financial obligations, but rather about both parties working together to create a stable and fulfilling life. This means that women shouldn't shy away from contributing financially or from other aspects of the partnership. By embracing their role in a relationship and being willing to contribute in various ways, women can foster a stronger bond with their partners. This includes emotional support, shared decision-making, and a willingness to navigate challenges together. Ultimately, it's about building a partnership based on equality, respect, and mutual support, where both individuals are actively involved in creating a fulfilling life together. As women reach a certain age and find themselves no longer being invited on dates, they face unique challenges that are often overlooked. This perspective sheds light on the fact that men, too, encounter difficulties in the dating scene, but there's a notable difference in societal perception. I never lost anybody that I needed because the real ones are still around, even if it's only a few. You see, 2023 taught me to never settle, to fight for the life, the career, the love that I deserve. Because if it doesn't make me happy, make me money, or make me better as an individual, why well, make time for it? Because I'm no longer convincing anybody to love me, to accept me, or even to respect me. I no longer care about fitting in. I'll sit alone if I have to and I'll build my own table. But I will no longer sacrifice myself just to say that I have a connection with somebody because most of the time it's been one-sided. I give more and 
they just take. But I'm so proud of myself because even in the darkest of times, I still went towards the light. I showed up and I thugged it out in moments where it was even hard to get up out of bed. Maybe I'm strong, maybe I'm just numb at this point, or maybe it's both, but I'm good with that. It's fine, I've been through a lot, but I'm a lot better than what I was yesterday. No matter how big or small the achievement is, a win is a win, and I'm so thankful for these lessons learned. So 2024, it's time to apply it. I'm gonna let that sink in. You want a high value man? So do you want a guy who's got status or wealth? Not necessarily wealth, but just has something going for himself. My argument here would be the more money he gets, the less he cares right, about but those, your money. Right, but those type of men want to be able to have an intellectual conversation. No, with not right really. Most men, most men will only experience unconditional love from their mothers. And some of us don't even get that. Most of us have never even felt appreciation or respect without conditions or hidden intentions. We don't know what it sounds like to hear, I see you and I'm proud of you. I'm glad you're here. You really make a difference. Yet the expectation is to constantly be displaying the strength and love that the world is hesitant in conveying. We're expected to have a thick skin but get judged if it turns to a hard shell. The first step in being a man is ignoring the hunger. Cause yes, boy, you gonna be starving. Starved of attention, starved of affirmation, starved of love, starved of being told that you are enough. Step two in being a man is comfortability with replaceability. You are only as good as you are useful. You are only as valuable as you are needed by others. Should there ever come a day, boy, where you fail to provide everybody with a smiling face, then do not be surprised when they say all men do is take up space. A lot of guys are socially awkward. I think I think you're a bit ignorant to like the average guy's experience. Consider this, right? The average guy today, his granddad had to put in a quarter of the work to mm -hmm. get the kind of woman that is four times as amazing <coughs> as the woman he's attracted. Oh, you're, are you talking? You're talking like about his grand, like his grandmother was an amazing woman and, mm -hmm. a, and a very very feminine natural woman, and his granddad yeah. really didn't have to do the kind of work he has to do right now Yo. as a young man. Listen, you're so so uh, you're talking about hoflation. Yes, it's hopefully. Hopeflation, so modern men have to work five times harder than their grandfathers did for women 20 times worse than what their grandmothers were. It's true. It's actually true. So I tell women this all the time. All men can change and all men will change, but there's only one woman that we're going to change for. It's just one. We don't change for all women. We only change for one woman. If he ain't changing, it's cause you ain't the one. That's all for today on Alpha Male. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications. You can support the channel by becoming a member or sending a super chat. Share your thoughts in the comments. See you tomorrow.